Friday by the grace of God. Um, um, let 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 what what I call. Let me just give you some scriptural examples of those who took up responsibility and those who ran away from responsibility and how it ended for them. Adam, when he ate the, the fruit and God asked him, what did he say? The woman you put here with me. Amplify says, the woman you gave to be with me. King James says, the woman you gave me. In other words, pushing the responsibility. It's if fault. It's not my fault. It's if fault. And by implication, it is also your fault, God, because you are the one that gave him, gave, gave me, gave her to me. You are the one that gave her to me. So in all of that, there is no responsibility, sense of responsibility. I actually, if did not push it into my mouth, I collected it from her and I ate it. No, there's no, there's no focus on that. The focus is the woman you gave me. The focus is you gave me. Woman and God, both of you are the one responsible, not me. Number two, you remember Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 15. When, when Samuel accused, when Samuel challenged him and said, what are you doing? What, what, what's wrong with you? And he says, I've he first of all lied. He didn't know. <laughs> he said, I've carried out your instructions. When, when, when Saul, Samuel said, ah, what about what I'm hearing? You can't, you can't run away from this. Okay. Again, instead of quickly admitting, what did he say? The soldiers, you are the king, you are the head of the army, and yet the soldiers, if you had told them to not to take it, would they have taken it? The soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. Always they speared, they, they, not me. I'm talking about those who run away from responsibilities. But let, let me let me use those two. You know, if you um, okay, let me just give one more, one positive one. Second Samuel chapter twelve verse thirteen. Second Samuel chapter twelve verse thirteen. Before we get to verse thirteen, Nathan went to meet David and told him a parable of someone who who did what was wrong, and then David reacted. And Nathan said, you are the one that committed the, the offense. Look at what David said. No stories. I have sinned. Taking responsibility of his actions. Believe me, I, I have, in my life experience, I have seen that. Sorry is so powerful. When you genuinely apologize about something, when you genuinely admit that you're human, I, it, it, for me, I, I don't know. It, I, I just believe that it's, it's part of confidence, really. You know, the example of my of my daughter that I was saying that I said, ah, there was a lot of cue behind me, and, and I was almost panicking. I said, What? You forgot? At best, you apologize. I'm sorry. Please give me a minute. Calmness. Confidence comes. When you have confidence, it's easier for you to admit. Those who argue and push, they, they, they have issues of self-confidence. They have issues of low self-esteem. But it's easier for you because I know, I, I remember, was it last Friday or upper Friday, I was saying that one of the things that helped me is when I know that nobody's perfect. You may know my weakness. I may not know your weakness, but I know that you too have your weakness. I'm not even interested in knowing your weakness, but I know that you too, you are not perfect. It's only God that is perfect. So if you, you, can, you can dwell on my weakness and say, hey, oh, you did this. Oh, that's terrible. Why are you doing this? Okay, fine. I'm sorry I did it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I move on. You behave as if you don't have any minus in your life. It's okay for me. It's okay. I don't, I'm not moved. Seriously, I'm not moved. 
You don't have any minors. You are you are prime and proper. Oh, it's okay. God bless you. But I know that I run to God and say, God help me. I I have I, God help me. Just help me. So the king, King David, as big as he was, admitted to one of his subjects that I have sinned. I have sinned. When you find people who never admit their mistakes, there are people who run away from taking responsibility. They never admit their mistakes. They are never wrong. They will always find a way to push it to somebody else. Okay? So, he says, he, he, David could have had given so many all kinds of crazy excuses. Ah, it's not me. He was, she was the one that was buffing outside. Why should she be buffing outside? Why should she be buffing? Nick? Some will even give ridiculous, ridiculous um, excuses. David could have said, why was she buffing naked? Eh, she could have buffed with, with clothes on the knee. Why was she buffing naked? Why was she, why was she, why was she outside buffing? David could have said, I don't even know new, I don't even know what pushed me. Going to the mystery now, the mysterious. I don't even know what pushed me, what pushed me to go to the top of the house. I don't even know. I just felt my legs. My legs was just were just going up. And as a mystery, you know, a, a lot of people just they just go into. I don't even know what happened. I don't even know how, how my, my hand, my hand just went up. All kinds of silly excuses. Instead of simply instead of simply admitting I have sinned. I'm sorry. And God restored him. God restored him. You need to take responsibility of your life. Realize that God is not going to hold your uncle, your brother, your friend, your husband, your wife responsible. God is going to hold you responsible. 